I'm Betsy Kamisic. I'm a Care Center Employment Services volunteer, and I co-facilitate our interviewing workshop with my team member, Dave Butler. I'm gonna walk you through part two of this material. A little bit about myself. I'm a retired HR professional. I retired six years ago after 37 years in HR. During my career, I probably interviewed thousands of people. The most important thing that I want you to walk away with after listening to this workshop, Dave has already started emphasizing, and that is the importance of practice. Practice, practice, practice. To be good at anything, you need to practice. I'm gonna be moving through this material pretty quickly. Feel free to pause at any time. So our biblical support for this workshop contains two verses from Proverbs and one from 2 Timothy. I personally like the one from 2 Timothy the best. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. I find that very reassuring. And to me, if I were in a job search, it would be a good, a good verse to, to recite to myself daily. Our objectives for this course are, at the end, you should be able to know the purpose and value of interviewing, learn how to prepare for an interview, understand how to tell your story, and make it relevant to the position that you are applying for. Be able to demonstrate interviewing techniques and be prepared to pass it forward. So we all have a story. And when you're preparing to tell your story, because that's what an interview is, it's you telling your story, you need to keep in mind that context is key. Be prepared to tell the interviewer or interviewers what you bring to the table that they need. Often the first question in an interview is something like, tell us about yourself or tell us about your work history. I do not want you to start with your newspaper route when you were 13, or your middle school babysitting jobs. I want you to tell them about your work experience as it relates to their position. You're being interviewed by this company because they have a need, and your purpose in this interview is to help them figure out that you can help answer their need. So context is key. Details count. Details are important, but I want to keep, I want you to keep your answers complete, but not too long-winded, and practice will help with that. When I say confidence with humility, what do you think I'm saying here? I want you to be proud of yourself. I want you to be confident, but I don't want you to be a braggart. So here's an example. Person interviewing for a sales position says, in my last job at XYZ Corporation, I exceeded sales goals four out of five years, and I was asked to lead new product rollouts. You don't need to say, I don't know how they're managing without me. You can just leave that out. Honesty is the best policy. We all, we all know that. Honesty is the best policy. Brief honesty is the best policy in an interview. Do not talk endlessly. Make sure your story is focused on, on the company's position. Occasionally people tend to exaggerate in an interview. Not a good idea. Honesty is the best policy. Sometimes if we deviate from the truth, we have trouble remembering what the truth is. So your answers should, you should always have a positive tone with a factual, with factual content. So we're gonna talk more about con context and details that we mentioned in the last slide. As you're preparing for the interview, spend some time with the job posting and what you learned about the company in the research that Dave recommended that you do in part one. You are going to document experiences, inventory skills, match your skills and experience to the job. I want you to highlight your skills. And the way I want you to do that, I suggest that you create an Excel spreadsheet. In one column, you will list 
everything that the job posting is asking for, the duties, the responsibilities, the education, the experience. List that all in one column. In the second column, list wh when, where, and how you performed duties like that so that you will be able to easily prepare responses to, to questions that, again, that relate to the vacancy that you're applying for. Focus on how you can add value. Tell them what makes you fabulous. So as you're preparing this Excel spreadsheet, which I like, but you can do whatever you want, where are you gonna gather data? Look at prior resumes, cover letters, look at performance evaluations, Think about the feedback you've received from coworkers, managers. Focus on your strengths. Think about special projects you may have worked on and developed. That's where you're going to develop the or gather the information for this Excel spreadsheet. Of course, you're not taking this Excel spreadsheet with you to the interview, but you are going to practice, practice, practice comparing what they're looking for with what you have to offer. So your exit statement. Why are you leaving or why did you leave your most recent company? If you left on a positive note, there's not a lot of preparation that needs to be done here. It's the, the response is normally fairly simple. If you left involuntarily for any reason, you definitely need to prepare for this question. So I have a couple examples for you. First, if you were let go in a reduction in force, just tell them I was let go. It was a reduction in force. It happens all the time. It's not a, considered a negative, uh, nothing to be concerned about. Second example, you were fired for violating a company policy. Explain briefly what happened. Explain what you learned from the experience and point out that this will never happen again. Let's say you had a long break in employment because you were either a stay-at-home parent or you were taking care of a sick family member. Be brief, state the facts, no need to go into a lot of detail, just state the facts. So in all of these, never fault the company, don't fault yourself, be truthful. Remember, the truth is always the easiest thing to remember. Keep it short, unemotional, and factual. One more example here. Let's say you worked for a family-owned company. The owner's daughter graduates from college, and they let you go and give her your job. This is nothing to be ashamed of. It happens all the time. Almost everyone who's ever worked in a family-owned company has observed this happening. Just state the facts. Don't diss the company. Don't diss the daughter. Definitely don't say, you know, I've known that girl since she was 10 years old, and I'm sure my files are a mess today. Not necessary. Keep it short, sweet, and unemotional. Tell me about a time when. These are known as behavioral interview questions, and they're very common these days. It's important to prepare for them, but not easy to prepare for them because you can never anticipate. Here I have half a dozen examples for you. Tell me about a time when you had to deal with an irate customer, when you demonstrated innovation, overcame an obstacle, made a huge mistake. Sometimes in the job posting, if you closely review the job posting, you may be able to determine what a, a behavioral interview question or two might be. Or assuming there was a phone screen, typically there's a phone screen before the actual interview, you might have gotten a hint in the phone screen that they have a need of some type and that might turn out to be a behavioral interview question. So what I ask you to do is practice, practice, practice. Pick six, and I don't care if it's these six, go online. You, if you Google behavioral interview questions, you'll find dozens of them. Pick six, ask and answer them. And when I say ask and answer, I don't want you to 
write down the question and write down the answer. I want you to say it out loud. I want you to say it in front of a mirror. I want you to say it in front of your phone. I want you to schedule a Zoom meeting with a friend, give the friend the questions, and practice the answers. Practice, practice, practice. Uh, Dave, Dave uh, mentioned cars in part one, and if you've attended any of our other uh, online workshops, you've heard about cars already, challenges, actions, and results, and how have you addressed them? In an interview setting, as you prepare for the interview, I want you to think about challenges, actions, and results in your prior experiences that relate, again, always, always relate to the vacancy that you're applying for. If you tell them about a challenge, action, and result, in your babysitting when you're in high school. They don't care unless you're applying to be a child care worker. Always make it relevant to the position that you're applying for. I've got a couple examples in our next slide. So these are two diff very different challenges and, some, uh, and related actions and results. So let's just walk through them fairly quickly. The first one, customer is angry and your challenge is to make sure the customer does not leave angry. You smile at the customer, tell him you're sorry for his frustration, ask him to wait a minute and get your supervisor. Supervisor gives the customer a free drink and he leaves the store in a better mood. Very different challenge. You're a, you're a salesperson, you're assigned a new territory where sales have declined by 18% in the prior year, and your sales quota is to increase sales by 10% this year. So you sur survey some customers, you identify a new source with a cheaper product, you put on a seminar for past, current, and prospective customers featuring extra service. And your result is you regain 63% of past customers. You add 27 new ones and increase sales by 24%. So challenge, action, results. Think about some things that you have done, again, that are relevant to the position that you're applying for. All right, the inner, the bulk of the interview is done. Your interviewers are done asking you questions and it's not time to, for you to ask them questions. And as Dave said earlier, and it's very important to have questions. And I recommend that you have those questions written down in a little booklet, a little book that you've got with you, a little folder, a little binder or something. And sometimes the questions will all have been answered during the course of the interview. Here's a fallback that you can always ask. Tell me what you like about working here. Now, what would be some questions, and let me back up a minute. I want these questions to be solid work-related questions. Some questions that I do not want you to ask at this point would be, how soon could I take sick leave? What time will my lunch break be? Uh, would it be a problem if I had to leave work early a couple days a week? Those are not the questions to ask at this point. So on your way out, what do you do on your way out? You wanna get business cards from everyone you interviewed with. If possible, lots of people will, uh, lots of times an interview will be in a conference room and people won't bring their business cards. Try to get as many as you can. If nothing else, you have the contact information for the recruiter and ask, when can I expect to hear you? And you want those business cards because you wanna send a thank you note. So let's talk about that thank you note. And the thank you note can be an email if you want. That would be my preference because I have too much paper in my life. Or if you'd like to write a little note on a note card or type a letter, either, either is fine. It's the content that's important. I do not want you to say, so nice meeting you, great, great to learn about the company, I hope to hear from you. I want you to say, it was great meeting you, I have a lot more information about the company and the vacancy, and here is how I can help you address your issues. Here is how I can help 
with this project. Here is how I can help with whatever. This is your follow-up opportunity to let them know that you, you are the answer to their need. So now you're waiting for the phone to ring. It's been a week, it's been two weeks, what do you do? Well, what did they tell you when you asked? When, when can I expect to hear you? If they said a week and you haven't heard, if they said two weeks and you haven't heard, don't be surprised. For one thing, HR people are often busy. For another thing, interview plans are often well laid out and then things happen. One candidate had to reschedule because they were sick. One interviewer got sick. One whatever happened. Uh, so if they said, you should hear from us within two weeks and you haven't, wait two weeks and a day, follow up, either a phone call or an email, just hoping to hear from you, letting you know I'm still very interested in the position. And then if you want, you could probably follow up once a week. Don't do that. Don't follow up more than once a week. You'll look like you're stalking. Another test, a test at this point. Yes, sometimes at this point, there is indeed a test. It might be a skills test, depending on what kind of position you're applying for. It could be a personality test, similar to the self-assessments that we recommend in our workshop, preparing for job search success. So it's a skills test, obviously, Practice, 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 do the best you can. If it's a personality test, don't try to game the system. Don't try to, oh, I, I think, you know, the natural me would answer this, but I think they're probably looking for someone who will answer that. I, I don't think it's productive to do that. Answer what, answer what is true for you. Congratulations you have a job offer. So assuming the offer was made by phone, but because typically they are today, ask if it will be followed up in writing and ask if you can have a couple days to uh, review the offer and give it some consideration. And now you need to decide if you think the salary offer is fair. So how do you do that? Do some homework. You can go to salary.com. You can go to Glassdoor. Sometimes the job posting itself will have listed a salary range. You, you're going to want to think about the fact that the salary offer, the, the pay rate, is not the only part of the compensation plan. Assuming it's a full-time job, there's going to be salary, insurance benefits, time off benefits, hopefully retirement plan benefits, and who knows what other benefits. So if initially the salary is a little lower than you were hoping for, evaluate the benefits, evaluate the whole package, and if you need more information, go, go to the employer's website, go to Glassdoor, you may be able to find something in Google so that you get a clear picture of the offer, not just based on the salary. And when you're looking at salary, you need to understand salary ranges. So there are market ranges and then companies have their own ranges. Let's use as an example, a civil engineer with five years of experience. Uh, let's say for example, salary.com tells you that the salary range for this position is 75,000 to $100,000 a year. And you're of course, hoping to be at the high end of that range. If you're interviewing with a smaller company, their, their range may not be 75,000 to 100,000. Their range might be 60,000 to 80,000. So you need to think about how the, you need to one, one thing I recommend is that you take salary.com numbers with a grain of salt. They're often inflated because they are, the information is not submitted by companies, it's submitted by individuals. So it's, it's a good reference point, but it's not the end all and be all of salaries. And then within a company, they may have their own salary range. So you're applying for this job as a civil engineer and they've offered you $65,000 and you were really hoping for 70,000. Not a problem to call 
and say, is there any room to negotiate uh, the salary? And they may well say that we have an inter internal equity issue. Internal equity means we have to look at our own people. We have to look at our current employees who are in this position at this point in their careers. If, they're, if they have a, another employee who is a top-notch employee, who's been with them maybe three years, but is at five years in, in that person's career, and that person is at 70,000, they're probably not gonna offer you 70,000 because that per, their, their current employee is a known commodity and you are not. So you need to keep all of those in, in mind. If you have the opportunity to negotiate, important to do that. So some things are, are not negotiable, pretty definitely. Medical insurance, retirement plans, those are legal documents and are not easily negotiated. To change a legal document for one new employee doesn't happen very often. Time off is a different a, a different benefit that can be negotiated. So if they're offering you two weeks of, sal of vacation and you're used to three weeks of vacation, if you can have a third week of vacation, that's something that's not mandated by a legal document and, and can happen. Sometimes sign on bonuses. If you're unhappy about the salary offer, but they say, we're sorry, all we can do, but you can tell they really want you. You can ask if they ever offer a sign-on bonus. If you have a $5,000 sign-on bonus up front, would help make that the base salary that you're not totally happy with, make it a little more palatable. So those are some things to think about. This last bullet may seem so obvious. But I added it recently because I, I worked with a care center guest a couple years ago, a guy with a good background, project management, he came in about four weeks in a row. And uh, the third time that he came in, he said, I've got a job offer starting on Monday, I'm excited, it's a small company, smaller than I'm used to, but it, but it looks like it's a good opportunity. And then the next week he was back in the employment, in the care center. And I'm thinking, why are you here? Why aren't you at your new job that was supposed to start on Monday? He said he showed up on Monday. His, his interview and all of his conversation was with the owner of this very small company. Showed up on Monday, the owner wasn't there, and no one was expecting him. No one knew anything about this job offer. Finally, the HR person was able to track down the owner who, who had gone out of town with his wife for a long weekend. And the owner said, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot. I did, I did make that guy a job offer, and I guess I forgot to tell you. Could you ask him to come back next week? Apologize to him for me. Ask him to come back next week, and between now and Monday, you and I can get together and give him a written job offer. So never accept a job offer without a written confirmation. Next slide. And in closing, I wish you best of luck in your search, best of luck in interviews. If you need more help, reach out to us at willowcreek.needsmet.org, which is where you found this, um, this recording. We are available to do one-on-one -on -one virtual counseling. We like to do mock interviews. So we're here to help you in any way in your job search. Again, best of luck to you.